Whenever someone asks me about starting a YouTube channel, I try and steer the conversation away from production value, things like cameras, lighting, and audio. Because the truth is, if you're putting out good, entertaining content, people are going to watch regardless of the quality of your video. I can show you one example. Izzy Swan is a woodworker that I follow on YouTube, and he currently has 215,000 subscribers. And as far as I can tell, most, if not all, of his videos are filmed on a cell phone, and they all have horrible audio. Izzy, I'm sure you're not watching, but should you watch, I'm sorry, but gosh, it is so bad. But the truth is, his content is so good that you just don't care. A little while back, I actually made a video explaining why high quality audio is so important. This is an example of iPhone quality video, but with really high end audio. This is a Rode NT1A microphone running through the Toft Audio Design soundboard, which is about $4,000. Now here's the other extreme. So this is awesome video quality with really crappy audio quality. We're recording the video with a Canon C100, which is a $5,000 body, but we're recording our audio through the iPhone. Where you want to spend your money is on a microphone. In the last video, we showed you the Rode SmartLav Plus, which plugs directly into your cell phone and gives you, I would say, close to studio quality audio. Uh, but if you're not using a cell phone, if you are going to use a DSLR or a point and shoot, you have a few other options. The microphone that we personally use is the Rode VideoMic Pro, and I would say this is the industry standard. I would say probably, I don't know, 80% of YouTubers, I just pulled that figure out of nowhere, but I would say 80% of YouTubers probably use this microphone on their camera. We've been using it for the past two years, and it's never given us a problem. Uh, in fact, on our trip to Norway, the only problem we had was this cracked when it was crushed in the back of the car. Super glued it back together, still working great. If you're using a point and shoot camera, one of the problems you'll run into is that the jack that's on these microphones is not compatible with the lower end cameras. You really don't get this eighth inch mini jack until you spend two, three, five hundred dollars. So it's kind of a catch 22. If you want to use these types of mics, you sort of have to buy the higher end cameras. What's nice about the Video Mic Pro is it's a shotgun microphone, meaning that only audio entering the tip right here goes through a little barrel and is picked up by the microphone. So any noise that's on the outside or behind the microphone is going to be dampened. And the reason this is nice is because it isolates your voice if you're talking to the camera. Uh, you'll remove road noise and room noise. Uh, it just gives you a lot cleaner audio and that can really improve the quality of your videos if your audio is clean and loud and people can hear you. Quick side note, I am a bit of a techie, so when you're setting up your camera with the Rode VideoMic Pro, make sure you use the plus 20 dB setting on the back because you want to use the preamp inside this microphone as much as possible and the one in your camera as little as possible. So when you're using it, put this dial all the way to the right to cut off the low frequencies, put this dial all the way to the right to boost internally in the microphone, and then turn down the gain inside your camera. If that was a little over your head, don't worry about it. That's just a little tip if you are really into this stuff. I hope that helps, guys. From experience, let me tell you, it's easy to get sucked into this stuff, and you can just spend all day researching and never actually make a video. Don't let this stuff stop you. Get out there. Get filming. Even if it's just the microphone that's on your camera, just know that eventually you're going to need to upgrade, uh, or otherwise people are going to be less likely to stick around to the end of your videos.